my name is Ian Wilson. I'm the Wallowa County Project Coordinator for the Grand Ronde Model Watershed. Today I want to talk to you about watersheds and stream restoration. So you might ask yourself, what is a watershed? Well, I thought I'd take this photo as one example. A watershed typically encompasses all the area that drains from ridgetop to ridgetop. We're looking up the Lostine River drainage right now, and you can see the ridge on the right and the ridge on the left. So this would be what we can see of the Lostine River watershed. The Grand Ronde Basin watershed is a little bit larger. The larger Grand Ronde Basin includes Wallowa County and Union County and drains the major rivers of the Grand Ronde, Catherine Creek, the Wallowa River, and the Amnaha and Joseph Creek rivers. Today, we're going to walk on a section of the Wallowa River as part of a site assessment to see what the current conditions are. So ask yourself, when you're looking at this image, does this river look straight to you? Is this a good thing? And now I'm going to slowly pan downstream. What do you notice here? The river splits into two channels, creating additional habitat for fish and wildlife. You can see this stretch of river has been channelized. It is very straight and there are some large boulders, which we call riprap, on the bank in the foreground of the photo. So what is good fish habitat? Behind me you'll see some logs in the stream. These make extremely good fish habitat. They provide places for the fish to hide. They slow down the velocity which is the speed which the water is traveling, which makes for resting places for young and old fish. I wanted to show you another example of the Wallowa River. And I want you to ask yourselves, is this good fish habitat? Or is this good fish habitat? And why would that be? I can tell you from my experience that this image with the wood in it and where the river is making a change in directions. It's much better fish habitat. Rocks are able to sort out. There's hiding covers we discussed earlier underneath the wood. And there's riparian trees growing in the wood. When we come back to our first example. We see there's really no wood in the stream. We have the stream eroding the bank. So there's really a lack of places for fish to hide or riparian vegetation growing. So my job as a stream restoration practitioner is to add this habitat like you see back here with the wood into the stream. How can we use nature to help us restore rivers and streams for good fish habitat and clean healthy water? One way to do this is to encourage beavers on the landscape. Beavers chew down trees which they then add to the river which creates some fish habitat as I mentioned before. Right here we have some older beaver activity where they've chewed down this willow tree and then they'll take some of these stems and either consume them or add them to the river. All right, so we've talked about watersheds. We've talked about what good fish habitat is and is not. We've talked about how nature can help us and how to assess a site as part of stream restoration and watershed health. And now I wanna to pivot to one of the tools we use in that site assessment and it's photo point monitoring. This is a way we can document change on the landscape before we do a project and after we do a project to see what kind of change that was. Was that change good? Did we see a positive response in riparian vegetation or a change in the stream channel? In other words, did our job work? Did we do a good job creating fish habitat? Okay, so taking photo points, what tools do we use? You're gonna like this. We use cell phones a lot of times. Why? Because they have good cameras and we can also turn on a GPS location uh, so that we can capture the coordinates of the place we take the photos. That's important because you want to take the photos at the same spot each time you take them and furthermore at the same angle. This is also important so when you're comparing photos side by side you can really see that change between the two photos. So what other things might be important by when taking photos for photo points? What about the lighting? Would you want to take photos on a cloudy day one time and a sunny day the next? Maybe not. What about the time of the year? 
Would a photo in the winter be comparable to a photo in the summer? Definitely not. And one, you'd have riparian vegetation that would be leafed out. And another one, you'd just have white snow with all the trees that lose their leaves would have no leaves. So other things to consider when taking photo points is you want to have an established point to take those at. And that, again, is where that GPS marker can come in handy. So you can use that to navigate back to, to take your photo from the same exact spot. Other tools you can use is you can use a metal stake pounded into the ground or a piece of rebar. And sometimes people even put the compass azimuth, that's the direction they take the photo at, to reference and make sure they take it at the same angle. Now I want to show you a real application of how we use photo points for monitoring. In the next series of photos, you're going to see two photos. The first one will be taken in 2017, and the next one in 2020. In this first photo, you will see the channel, and in the next photo, you will see the change of the riparian vegetation on the left-hand side. Those are alder trees. In this next photo, you're going to notice a large cottonwood in the background in 2017. And then following, you'll see the tree came down and it's added to the channel. This is a great way to document change in riparian vegetation and wood recruitment in the stream. Now you're going to see an aspen stand. This first photo taken in 2017 was following grazing. You can see there's very few young aspens and most of the grass vegetation has been uh, grazed down. In the next photo taken in 2020, you'll actually notice there are some young aspens that are starting to grow and there's much more grass. This has not been grazed for the fourth season. And finally, this is the next good photo point series to document channel change. In the first photo, which you probably noticed earlier, this you'll see a very uh, straight channel. And in the next photo, you'll see where the river is actually carved into and eroded a lot of the bank on the left-hand side. This is a great way to document change in the channel. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and learned something about what I do as a Ola County Project Coordinator, taking care of watersheds, creating fish habitat, encouraging beavers on the landscape, and using photo points for monitoring stream restoration. I would like to also say thank you to my son Malachi for helping film this video. Take care.